If you are a Mac owner and you're still using the same backup strategy that you've been using for the last two decades, then this is the video for you. I wanted to update my tutorial on this topic because the threat has changed. If you're like me and you've been on a Mac since forever, you were always told that having a backup was about protecting you from things like human error or hardware failure or software corruption. Today, you've got other threats like climate change or arguably even worse, someone hacking into your Apple ID and taking all of your data hostage for a ransom, including your photos. I'll tell you upfront, this video is going to be a little bit longer than some of my normal videos, but that's just because there's a lot of important details to cover. So yes, let's have an updated conversation about backing up your data. Coming up next on Tech Talk America. Hey folks, and welcome to the class. No chit chat, let's begin. The solution that I'm about to present to you has three major components. The first thing that you're gonna need is a cloud solution like iCloud, which allows you to optimize your data locally so that it doesn't take up a lot of space on your hard drive and ultimately stores a copy of your data so that if you ever have something like a fire, flood, or your in-laws visit and decide to cook, you can get a new device, sign in with your Apple ID and get everything back. The second component you'll want to have is an offline copy of your data that is not optimized and is also not connected to the internet. Think of it as a grab and go bag for your data. The third and final component is establishing a legacy contact so that upon your death, there is a legal document that says who gets access to your iCloud data without a court order. If this video leaves you with any unanswered questions, remember you can always sign up for a one-on-one -on -one tech therapy session with me. We meet through Zoom, it's chill, bring your spouse, maybe some popcorn. To book a session with me, please visit my website at techtalkamerica.com. You are going to need an external hard drive for this process, and let me give you a little tip. If you already own one that you would like to continue using, Go to the App Store and download a free app called Blackmagic Disk Speed Test. Once it loads, go to the File menu and select Target Drive. Point it at your external drive, click the big Start button, and if your read and write speeds are under 200 megabytes per second, it's time to think about replacing your drive. I recommend replacing your drive every four to six years just because these things do have wear and tear. At this point, I feel like we need to really quickly talk about how much storage you really need in a backup drive. Here's my guide to determine that number. Go to System Settings and navigate to General. Then click on Storage. This right here is the size of your local hard drive. If you go by Apple's guidance, your backup should be double that number. But if you ask me, it should be closer to triple since we're gonna set up the drive to have two partitions. One partition will be for Time Machine and the other will be a space where we can manually back up specific types of data that Time Machine doesn't back up well especially your photos. As of October 14th, 2023, my top three favorite drives are the Phantom Drive Solid State Drive, or SSD. There is one specific model of SSD that is made by SanDisk that I like because it is water resistant. The one downside to that drive is it is significantly slower. My third recommendation is any SSD made by the company OWC. I'm now gonna walk you through the process of formatting a new hard drive. Please note, if you are using a drive that you already own, you must move the data to another storage device since the data on the drive will be erased in the next steps, AKA don't blame me if you wipe out all your data. After you plug in your new drive, click on Finder and navigate to the Applications folder. Now scroll to the bottom where you'll find the Utilities folder. Double click on that and now let's launch Disk Utility. The Phantom Drive is here on the left, so let's click on that so that it's highlighted. Next, let's click Erase here at the top, and I'm going to rename this Backup Drive. And provided that the hard drive that you're using is an SSD, make sure that you change the format to APFS, and I recommend not encrypting it. Now that that's done, let's click on Partition, and then click the plus symbol here at the bottom to add a second partition. When you get this pop-up, click Add Partition, and now we can give it a name. I'm gonna call this one Manual Backup. Now click Apply. I'm now gonna teach you how to get Time Machine set up, and then we'll go over how to use it. Go into System Settings and go to General. Here at the bottom, click on Time Machine. Now click Add Backup Disk and point it to the partition named Backup Drive. 
Now click Setup Disk. I recommend turning off the encryption feature you see here and leave the other settings as is. Now click Done. If you want Time Machine to ignore certain folders in your computer, you can create those exceptions by going here into Options, and here you can manually adjust how often Time Machine runs. The first time you run Time Machine, it backs up the entire system, so do expect that it'll take a lot longer than normal. After that, it just looks for changes. At this point, I want to show you how to use Time Machine, and at the same time, I'm also going to point out some of its flaws, because again, Apple seriously needs to update the interface. If the type of data that you're trying to restore is a contact, Time Machine works pretty darn well. It's almost Halloween here, so let's delete my contact for Seance Knowles. Now, I'll click on the Time Machine icon here at the top right and select Browse Time Machine Backups. I can now click this arrow to go back in time, and sure enough, there's good old Seance. Now I can click on her card and restore her from the dead. That's an example of Time Machine at its best. Now let me show you an example where Time Machine is terrible. Let's say I select all of my emails and then click delete. It should be that I go through the same steps. I go to the Time Machine icon, click Browse Backups, but no, it takes me to Finder. And if I want to restore those emails, I better know my stuff when it comes to sifting through library files. Here's an even more perfect example of where Time Machine totally fails when it comes to protecting certain types of files. See this precious photo of me from my youth? Let's say I accidentally delete it, and just to make sure it's really gone, let's empty the trash too. Once again, if I go into Time Machine, it does not show me what my photo library looked like. Instead, it takes me to Finder, and the only way to restore it is to restore the entire library, which causes even more chaos and confusion, all to restore one photo. So this is what I'm talking about. It needs to be as easy to restore your emails and photos as it is to restore a contact. When I ask my clients what's their most valuable piece of data, they all say the same thing, photos. Let me propose a backup solution for your photos, then I will walk you through these steps more slowly so you can see the entire process. What I recommend you do is go into the Photos app, go to Settings, and then click on the iCloud tab. If it's currently set to Optimize, I recommend that you clone your photo library to your external hard drive, and after the library is cloned, we're gonna set the library on the external drive to download the originals. That way, if anything were to ever happen to iCloud, including you getting hacked, you've got a fully functional offline copy of everything. Now, let me walk you through that process a little bit more slowly. The first step is to copy and paste your local photos library to an external drive. Once it's done, double click on the library on the external drive to launch it in the Photos app. Now, let's go into Settings, and you see here where it says Use as System Library? What that button really means is communicate with iCloud. First, flip that switch on, then go to the iCloud tab and make sure iCloud Photos is turned on, because now we're inside the library that's saved to the external drive, we now need to change the setting to Download Originals. This process can take some time, but you'll know that it's done if you scroll to the bottom of the library and it says Synced with iCloud. Now that the backup has completed, you'll want to switch to the photo library on your local hard drive. To do this, just quit Photos and manually go to the Photos folder and double click on the library. Because iCloud was just communicating with the library on the external hard drive, we now need to go into settings and change it so that it's communicating with this library on the local hard drive. So now let's say six months goes by and I add all of these images. To add those images to my backup, I'll just plug in my external drive, double click on the library inside, go to settings and make this the system library, and after a few moments, iCloud downloads all of my recent photos and videos in full resolution. Now let's talk about protecting your documents. iCloud should be your first line of defense, and to make sure that iCloud is backing up your desktop and documents folders, I want you to go to System Settings, then click on your name at the top, followed by iCloud. Now click the iCloud Drive option and ensure that it is set to keep your desktop and documents folders in sync with iCloud. The second line of defense to keeping your documents safe is to use Time Machine. If you do want to go a step further, consider copying and pasting the contents of your documents folder to your external drive. And I do that around every four to six months. 
Next topic, contacts. Launch the contacts app, click on all iCloud, assuming that that is where you store all of your contacts. Now press command A to select all, then go to the file menu and hover your cursor over export and select export vCard. Now save that file to your external drive and set a Siri reminder to update that database every four to six months. Next, let's talk about music. If you've got a music collection that you've imported from CDs over the years, that's something you're definitely gonna want to protect. What I would recommend doing is a combination of two methods, time machine, and set a Siri reminder to manually copy the contents of the music folder to your external drive every four to six months, depending on how often you add new music. The last item on my list of important data to back up is your passwords. If you use Keychain to store that data, just go into Safari and then go to Settings. Now navigate to the Password tab and enter in your admin password or your fingerprint. Next, click on the three dots icon and select Export All Passwords. The system will create a CSV file that can be read in Numbers or Excel. Obviously, this is a document that you will want to store in a very safe place, and you might want to print and keep a copy of it in a safe location, like a safe. Let me also just say, if calendar data is something that you want to protect, you should know that you can only export one calendar at a time. In order to do this, click on the calendar so that it's highlighted, then go to File, hover your cursor over Export, and this part is so important. Do not click calendar archive. If you do double click on that file, it will replace your calendar data with the data in the archive. That means anything that you've added since will be wiped out. So don't do it. Now point the file towards your external hard drive and repeat this process for any other calendars you want to back up. If you have not yet created a legacy contact as part of your overall backup plan, please watch my dedicated video on this topic. It goes through the entire setup process and also addresses the top five questions that people tend to have about this subject. If this video helped you, please take a quick moment and hit the thumbs up like button. Leave me a little comment down below and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching everyone. This is David A. Cox with Tech Talk America. Class dismissed.